I'm Mark Baer. You're watching Your Town Television. I'm with Charlie Craddock, uh, an artist and owner of the uh, Craddock Butterfield Gallery. Uh, right. With his wife, Margaret Butterfield. Who is a poet. Who is a poet, so I don't want to leave Margaret out. Okay. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let, let's, uh, I've known you for a long time, so this, none of this is news to me, but right. out there they don't know. So uh, let's, let's start a little bit about your background. Well, uh, we, we lived in Marin for about 19 years before we moved down here, and I finished at the San Francisco Art Institute and uh, mostly started painting houses and working in produce, uh, just like your previous guest. Um, and then, you know, after a while, you know, after being in Marin for a lot, I mean, I did the gallery Route 1, and I had a little studio at, in Sausalito at uh, Liberty Ship Way. And, but then we, you know, we'd been in the Bay Area for a long time, and we thought, well, let's go down and you were you were you, you were in school there. Um, yeah, I you, finished you, you, there. You, you mentored there. You had yeah. uh, you worked with another group of artists there. Yeah, and then I figured out how to get out of there. <laughs> which yeah, was, and, and then so we came here, and I found that since I do surf, that the surfing is a million times better here than up there in yeah. a lot of ways. Um, but also just that we really like the area, so so we we moved here, and uh, and I've been working here ever since. So, so um, describe your work a little bit. Well, um, it's mostly oil paintings, uh, just oil. Recently, I've been doing these little oil on, uh, I guess it's masonite. And uh, I, it produces a kind of luminosity that you, because of the wood and the masonite that you don't really get off of a canvas. Uh -huh. And uh, I do some airbrushing, too, and, uh, but I much prefer painting with oils. And then, so. so I want to uh, one of your one of your longtime passions. Before we start looking at some of the art, has been astronomy. You have right. a, you have a big telescope at your property. You have a you live in a dark place. That's true. That's, so you have you have a great uh, visuals of, mm -hmm. of the of the night sky. We do, and you've incorporated into that work. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of this. So that's a planetary nebula. Yeah, NGC twenty four forty. So when I look through my Mead telescope. In the backyard, it's about 12 inches, and, and uh, when the sky is really dark, I can see these objects, and so they were pretty inspiring to me. So I thought I'd start painting them. Um, so some of these are, are paintings that I've interpreted from Hubble photographs, but now I'm going to do a globular cluster, uh, which is going to make me have to do my own astrophotography and do the painting from that. So and and and, and and these are big. Well, they're about. Four by four feet. Four by four feet. Okay. Let's let's see the next one. Oh no, that this is a different series. This this has to do with this, these guys. This okay. Is, this is the oceanic series. Okay. Um, and it's it's on a half round, uh, with uh, a solar eclipse going on in the middle, kind of, but not really. I'm not sure what it is. And uh, I have a whole series of these. Uh, this is a quite a bit larger. Uh, this originally started off uh, as uh, I was surfing with a GoPro on the top of my board, and I, you know, jumped off, and the board goes flying away, and that's actually the image of looking <laughs> from the surfboard into the wave, oh, even wow. though I've kind of reinterpreted the wave in my own way. Uh, but yeah, um, so being in the water and being in the ocean in this area, particularly, uh, is very inspiring to me. I call it cold Hawaii because it's the transparency you can see 30 feet down in the water and it's not like up north where you can't see anything down in the water. Wow, so it's, it's crystalline. <laughs> what are we yeah. looking at here? Uh, similar to this, it's, it's, a, it's a round on masonite and um, just the feeling of the wave kind of swirling around. Um, what you can't see is how, how luminous this is, you know, and I, I guess that's what you get from oil that you can't quite get from acrylic. You can't quite get that luminosity. So. Yeah. Here, here's, here's another. Okay, that's, yeah, that's about two by two feet. Uh, and uh, same idea, just kind of experimenting with the feeling that you get spinning around under the water in the wave. Okay. Okay, so this so we now we understand have a, a sense of uh, what you do, and uh, uh, let's uh, and now you've been in uh, you had the uh, gallery in um, in the village uh, in in Carmel Valley Village for 
a, a, a few years, and that was a great space. You brought in a lot of other artists. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of lectures. You were, um, I think, very good citizens to the art community. You've, you've already, you've always incorporated good art citizenship into whatever you, you, you've you done. You've always included the I and the we. And uh -huh. and now you're doing that with the uh, the Craddock Butterfield Gallery in, in Pacific Grove. It so does. It gives me a chance to, to meet the neighbors and, and talk to people individually and get their response directly from the art, which I really enjoy. And another thing about the gallery is I can set it up the way I want to. I You know, if... if uh, if I want certain, a lot of times I'll set things up and I'll look at it and it won't be right and I'll, I'll just have to go back in there and start rearranging it till it looks right. And But I have the ability to do that. And then I can incorporate other artists into it, which kind of gives a different context for my art. Uh huh. So you, you, you get to see yourself in, in uh, juxtaposition. Right. I'm, I'm Lucas Block, who, who's a, you know of, who's yes. an airbrush artist in this area. Um, I, I would like to try and have a little. Uh, I guess I would call it an air show. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, my, my airbrushes and his airbrushes kind of combined, and maybe maybe a little bit of things that aren't airbrushes. Maybe if you because he's very formal in his painting, whereas I'm kind of much more kind of tangential. So so I think that contrast would be interesting. Uh, so yeah. So you uh, are you still working a, uh, uh, with, with airbrush? And, and where, where are you doing most of the work? You, I know that you're working in your space, but you're also uh -huh. working in your home studio. And how, how's that flow going? Right. Well, I wor mostly work in my space, and I'm not doing very much airbrush anymore. I'm, uh -huh. I'm really focusing on oils. Uh -huh. um, so I have a couple different series. These, the Oceanics, and, and there's a few other things going on, too, that you haven't seen yet. You need to come out to look at the gallery. So, so let's <laughs> talk about, uh, the um, uh, again, again, the astronomy part of this. Uh, uh -huh. Where did this interest come from, and how did, well, how did this develop? I had a friend, I had a, a, an acquaintance up in the Bay Area that started doing astronomy, and then so when I moved down here, I had no idea that it was going to be so amazingly dark. And then there's up on Chu's Ridge, right across from where we live, there's the uh, Mira Telescope, which is a 36-inch reflector, and um, and this this is out in uh, Ch uh, Ch I want to say Chu's Ridge. Oh, okay. It's on top of Cheese Ridge. Okay. And anybody can go look through that big telescope once a month. In Kachawa, uh, I want to say. Is I mean, once a year. Yeah. It's in Kachawa. It's at about 5,300 feet, and uh -huh. the, the, the scene is really good up there. Um, but I like the idea of kind of doing the artwork and, and making a connection between the science. So. Uh huh. And 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 I and, and it, it, you know very interesting now the the relationships between art and science and and that and definitely and, and what do you uh, uh, there the what you get out of um, you know there's one thing looking at through a telescope one uh -huh. thing taking photographs right but then what do you see when you're na then transferring this into a, a piece of art like for what does example, it make you you know what does it make you do yeah. Well, um, it like for example, these globular clusters. This is a good time of year to look at globular clusters. These, just, these are these areas in the sky. If you look and you know where to look, there's just a bunch of suns all kind of packed into each other, just millions of suns, and they're just kind of emanating out in every direction, and they're very interesting objects. And and so I'm going to be photographing that. The thing about astrophotography is it kind of just immediately leads into the science real quick because it's uh, in order to actually do the astrophotography, you, you need a tracking mount as well as the camera mount, and then those have to be synchronized so, so that the stars don't just move, you know, so that you can keep on that object for a long time. Talk about your telescope a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a need, and uh, it's a good... 12 inch, it's, it's suitable for certain kinds of research like spectrometry and, and, uh, and certain kinds of things like that. I mean, you can do, you could do any kind of research with this telescope actually. It, it's a difficult scope though because it's so powerful that it, unless you have your tracking really good, it'll move too fast. Whereas if on a, on a smaller scope, you have a wider field of view and you can see things in a different way. Oh, this is our recent eclipse with a little bit of cloud under there. And I did that on the smaller scope on a stellar view with Bader filter film. Uh, 
And that's about how much of an eclipse we got out down here in Carmel Valley. It was about that much. Wow, but it wow. was pretty fascinating. Um, it was enjoyable watching. So, so, so uh, uh, again, so we, when you're painting this, and, and you're talking about the, what the, how the art and the science works together, every color represents uh, a, ma a matter of heat. Well, every, so, so you, yeah. have to, you kind of have to understand the science to understand how to paint it. Well, um, like with the nebula painting, um, it's, uh, the colors represent different gases that whatever this thing is emanating, yeah, um, probably hydrogen and, and uh, hydrogen would be the reddish. And, and, and are, there's all kinds of different types of gases, and each gas relates to a different color. Uh, this object is like, you know, maybe 200 million light years away, so it's, it, when you look at it through a telescope, you don't see all those colors, you just see a gray kind of mass. But when, when you put on a CMOS filter or you leave it on there long enough, the colors will start coming out. And then, uh, and, and then what, kind of by the pro, just by the, you know, again, I can look at that forever. But by the process of painting, and, and, and I'll only see so much. Right. But when, 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 you, when you're in it, and you're, and, and you're looking at this thing and, and bringing it down, and, and the more so of the science you know, uh -huh. is it the more you probably see and understand as you're, you're, you're working in a, in a granular detail. Right. If you did spectrometry on that object, you'd be able to, you know, with a spectrometer, you break down all the different uh, constituents of, of the different gases that are emanating, and then you find out, you'd kind of do a light curve and, and find out. From that, you can find out how far away it is and just all kinds of stuff, what the masses are of an object or anything. So it's, it's interesting. It mixes the, the art. To me, there's a tradition, um, if you do any, any astronomy at all, there's a long tradition of drawing at the telescope. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing a little bit of pretty soon, which is like what they used to do in the old days. Back in the 1700s, when they first started seeing these objects, they'd draw them. So there's oh, wow. a tradition of that in astronomy. Of course, of course. How else would they? Didn't, they weren't photographing well, back yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I'll be probably be doing some of that, and uh, maybe working with Sky and Telescope in some way with that, I hope, at some point. Wow. Well, so how, how, many, uh, how, how many nights out there a, a week are you out there? Well, I, I haven't. I was out there just the night before last, just because I hadn't been out in so long. But uh, I've been really busy with the gallery, uh, and I'm not getting to get out enough. And, uh -huh. um, so, but yeah. So, uh, so let, let's, let's talk about the gallery, uh, running a gallery. And this is a, a, a pretty big undertaking. Yeah. And, 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 and just so people know exactly, tell them exactly where it is. <laughs> well, it's right in Pacific Grove, right next to the, the uh, Bookworks Coffee Shop. It's the building next door upstairs. And it's, it's, it's a smallish space. It's not, you know, I've got to be reasonable. It's not Carmel, it's Pacific Grove. Uh -huh. The one thing it does have, it has a beautiful deck out in the front of it. And, and on nice days, I'll put paintings up out on the deck as well as in the gallery. So. There's usually a lot to look at. There's, uh -huh. there's going to be a lot to look at up at our gallery. And uh, and then, what kind of response have have you, have you been getting to the work? Pretty good. Uh huh. Pretty good responses. That that that's that's really excellent. And uh, so um, let's go over um, your 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 new work. Where where's it going now? The new work. The, yeah, the, the new big pieces. Uh, well, um, uh, these. These nebula paintings are probably going to, I'm probably going to be trying to work with Sky and Telescope. Uh -huh. uh, and then um, there's a few other series that are going on that I don't know how to explain them because uh, I may have started something 20 years ago and I, I might want to pull it out and keep working on it. And um, in fact, there's a, there's a painting like that in the gallery right now <clears throat> that's, it's, it's, it's kind of surrealist. I guess you call it surrealistic. Yeah. But it it also has issues. It, it ta also talks about what's going on in our society. Uh huh. And so, um, you know, not that I don't think painting, you know, should always be just a, something that looks pretty and makes you feel good. I, I think painting should also probably be addressing some of the things that are going on in our. Well, it can, it, it, it can do all those things. It can. Uh, and and, and I'm, I'm glad you touched on your, your looping back, because 
I, I have a very vividly um, remember being in your uh, in your in your art space, uh, where you have lines and lines and lines of paintings down the row from various parts of your uh, um, of your career, uh -huh. and that you'll go and then you'll start working here and you'll start working there because nothing yeah. you know not, until it leaves the until it leaves the studio it's not done right you, you know a, a, a work is you know until it's out the door and on somebody else's wall it it's still in play well although you know a lot of paintings just kind of happen more naturally and they're they're easier somehow they just kind of come together and but then some paintings um yeah it can be Take years. You take years, and you're, it takes a long. It, it's such a mysterious process. You'll, it is. You'll, you'll see the, you know, the, the, the one day that there's the piece that fits that that finishes it off. And, and you're always learning something about yourself in the process. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's really and, and then the, uh, you, you know, what, what's what's always interesting to me, and you know, since I've started painting, is that you'll work and work and work on something and put hours and hours of, of, of work on something and then you'll make that you'll see something you'll make that mad dash that you could risk it all you could, yeah. you, you, you could totally ruin a painting <laughs> by, by making that mad dash at it and putting that extra thing on it you could and uh, but that's the you have to be able to uh, that's the years of experience and work behind it to be able to make that that leap well a lot of there's a lot of I guess you could call it editing in a way I mean I guess Picasso I, I don't really want to quote Picasso but I think he said something about you know you're destroying as much as you're creating in the process of making a painting and so yeah a lot of times you'll be you'll like completely you know cover up something and put in something different or or just tie things together in a different way as long as you keep if you're still looking at the painting in 20 years <laughs> you start seeing different things in it so anyway this is a pleasure having you here and uh, any any last words for the uh... just come by and check out the gallery and uh, anytime we're open Fridays 6 to 9 and Sunday uh, it's Saturdays and then we're open by appointment so please come by this is great. There you are playing your 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 flute. So you play music as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one thing I forgot to say. With uh, uh, whenever we have our openings, uh, recently I've been I've been playing music with Kalen Nashimoto and uh, Kumi Ayuda uh, at our gallery. So come by and hear us play music as well. Okay. So anyway, I'm Mark Bear. My guest Charlie Craddock, the Craddock Butterfield Gallery in Pacific Grove. Uh, it's fabulous work, and uh, just seeing it on, on, on the screen doesn't really do it justice because it's very luminous, very bold, and very knockout. So anyway, a pleasure. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you Mark. so much, man. Thank you.